The McGill Libraries are an important instrument for teaching. Um, here you have elements that point to different aspects of our history, to different aspects of our sciences. And for a young student today, it is a mirror of the past to show that all this extraordinary electronic media that surrounds us, the electronic images, the electronic text, were not born from nothing, but have their ancestors in the McGill Library. Every technology has its virtues and its faults, and every time you use a technology for a text, to present a text, you gain and you lose something. The moving images, the equivalent of pop-up books on screen, have important uh, uh, ancestors in the first printed books. So if you want to teach, for instance, science, want to teach anatomy, you have the possibility of going to the virtual images but more importantly, the student can see a book like this one, which is an early book, uh, 17th century, that shows the different parts of the human anatomy by displaying them with folds. And this was printed and assembled for students of anatomy. So it's interesting for the students today to see how their great, 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 great grandparents would study. During the many years I spent in Canada, I've been to McGill and its library many times. And every single time I've been astonished by the kindness, the generosity of the staff of the McGill Library. These intelligent, erudite, trained men and women are at our disposal to show us what they have and what the objects that they show us mean. And this is not just an act of generosity on their part. It's a reminder of our responsibility, our responsibility as readers to maintain this place with our presence, but also financially, because these cultural institutions are in danger of fading unless we help. And if they disappear, we will be the poorer because we will lose our experience of the past and our promise for the future.